Good morning folks and welcome to another one of my videos. So today I have just the one pair on watch and that is Euro Pound. So I'm going to break this down for you now. This may be a slightly shorter video due to the fact that I have just the one pair on watch, but the market across the board is looking very, very undeveloped. There are lots of pairs in my top six and in my wild cards, in my additional pairs that look like they need much more time to uh, provide any kind of setup which would resemble an entry which I have learned to look for. So that is one of the things about trading. The market for a little while now has not been providing pretty much anything in the way of uh, opportunities that we can get involved in. And that is one of the things that we have to do as traders is we have to sit on our hands. Okay, Sometimes the market provides lots of opportunities. Sometimes it provides none. And for a little while now, the market has been uh, not providing much in terms of entry. So that's just one of the things that the market does. It moves in cycles. Okay. It has corrective cycles and it has impulsive cycles. And we've well and truly been in a, a very, very corrective cycle for quite a long time now. So it is what it is. And you just have to sit on your hands. And that's one of the reasons that wealthy people have multiple streams of income, because not all of your streams of income make you uh, money or make you a large amount of money at any one time. So you have to diversify, which is what I've done, okay, to see me through these times when there's not much in the way of opportunities. But similarly, we also have to stay on the ball because we don't know when these opportunities are going to shape up, okay? And I remember once um, where there was four opportunities. It was a Monday morning, I believe, and there was four opportunities at exactly the same time. And uh, so we have to be ready for when these opportunities present themselves. Okay, so let's break euro pound down for you now and uh, go into today's trading sessions as if there is an abundance of opportunities. That way we don't take our eye off the ball. Okay, we don't suddenly start sleeping on the job as it were and switch off just as a setup potentially presents itself. So why am I looking at euro pound? Euro pound is sometimes a difficult pair to analyze just because of how messy it can be. But if you learn how to read structure, as I said in yesterday's video, then you can cut through the noise a lot of the time and actually decipher what the market is telling you. So on the higher time frames, I'm kind of just disregarding this as a bit of volatility, because if we switch the switch to the line chart, you can see that that big wick that was there does not appear. That is a good way that you can filter out um, whether something is volatility or not. If we switch to the weekly chart, once again, it appears just as volatility. And if we do switch to the line chart, you can see that we have this kind of we have this kind of one, two, three move, which has a one, two, three middle section, which then breaks the high. Okay. We then we also have this. I'm just switching to the line chart because on a pair such as this, such as Euro Pound, it can help us cut through the noise. We then have that one, two, three, which has that kind of expanding one, two, three middle section, which breaks the highs and then breaks below, giving me a clue that that is a completed piece of structure. So the line chart, if you're trading a particularly messy, messy pair, can be a good way of deciphering what is actually um, price action, which is indicative of the sentiment of the market, and what is actually just noise and volatility caused most likely by people being re reactive um, over something that they've heard in the media, some news-based um activity so seeing that as a completed piece of structure so now if we just move down to the daily chart you can see that we have we didn't quite tap into this high but you know that what i just broke down for you is now a completed piece of structure that kind of one two three with that one two three expanding middle section so we don't necessarily need to so then we analyze once we break out of this okay we then analyze the next structure and if we just look at this, we can kind of see here, I believe this is clearer on the four hour chart. Sometimes it's uh, easier to move down to these. We then have this structure here. OK, move down to the lower time frame. Sometimes sometimes that can be easier. We then have this kind of one, two, three move. OK, where we don't quite reach the highs, but we do meet, uh, do meet. We don't tap into that high, but we do tap into this one here just about, okay? And we have that one, two, three. So we have that one, two, three wave move, 
with a one, two, three middle section, which taps into that high, just about giving me a clue that that is a completed move as well. Okay. And then you can see here. So this is once you, once you uh, learn how to read price action, you can kind of cut through all the, this noise and suddenly what might have appeared to you as mess doesn't look like mess anymore. Okay. So we have this kind of, I analyze the next structure. We have this one, two, three, the one, two, three middle section. Okay. And at the end of this, you can see, I believe that there was a little, yeah, we have kind of have this one, two, three at the end of it with a one, two, three middle section with a one, two, three last leg where the impulses of a, are of a similar length. Price then scoops back up for a double top or a treble top almost in this instance. To excuse the drawing, that could look like many different things, but I digress. And then we push down, okay? So this is what I do um, on a daily basis, or I was doing on a daily basis. I do it, certainly do it on a weekly basis, a little bit of pattern separating to help me make sense of the structures. I know that Euro pound is a pair which is notorious for giving these kind of scoop double tops and double bottoms. We see that again here. We have a little correction. Okay, price scoops up, taps into that area where the liquidity was sat, and then it sells off. Okay. And then we have that kind of impulse correction continuation, which is the natural ebb and flow of the market. We then have this little footprint, which is relevant to the entry, which I will be looking for today. Okay, so we impulse down, we correct, and we leave a little footprint, which kind of retests the back end of this, okay? So if I just get rid of that little bit of uh, drawing, that doodling that I did there. So we have a little bit of a footprint here, okay? And it's, although it's not very standout, okay, we do have an exchange of liquidity here, and there was enough of an exchange of liquidity here to cause price to break below all of this, okay? So when we exchange liquidity here, we broke below all of this volume that had been built up, okay, within this complete, completed piece of structure. So that gives me a clue that although this is not a very standout exchange of liquidity, there may be a lot there and a lot of um, stop loss orders if price taps into that next time around, which may cause it to sell off with the similar level of aggression as it did this time, that time around, okay? So then I zoom in to this piece of structure here and notice the other clue that we will likely come up to this area is because if you look at all these pieces of, you know, these corrections here, price failed to tap into a previous high. Okay. We did kind of have a completed piece of structure here. Okay. So we can kind of see this as one piece of its own. But when you have a lots, lots of near misses like this, that, that may increase the likelihood that we push up to this area. And as you can see over here, that's what we did. So I'm seeing this is a completed piece of structure. Okay. And then we have this uh, piece of structure here. So we, we kind of tapped into this high here, but we moved down correctively. So one of the things we're always doing as traders is analyzing how price moved. This is what those of us who trade the Fal Falcon strategy called the nature of the market. So when we broke this high, I asked myself, how did we move down? And you can see that we had some impulsive momentum here. We pushed up correctively, but then the clue for me is that we put pushed down very, very correctively. We broke this low correctively. And when we have a corrective break of an area of value, that implies a more impulsive move up. And that's what we got. Okay, we then move into this structural structure here. Okay, I've said to you previously that when when we when we have a second touch like this, so a second touch of this piece of structure, and we don't really move away very much. We kind of count these two touches as one touch. Okay, so if if we'd have moved down to you know to these areas from here, then this would have been the second touch. But I'm kind of seeing this as one touch because we never really moved away when we touched it this time around. Okay, and we did also didn't really, uh, the middle section, as it were, within this piece of structure starts here. So we have that one, two, three middle section where the impulses within that are of a similar length. So I would anticipate that we move up from there because typically speaking, when we have, uh, you know, when we have an angle which is like this or like this, for example, that's not really a, a, a structure that I've seen that just suddenly breaks to the downside. When we have 
what would have been at the time of squeeze, what tends to happen is price breaks the lows, gives us something more parallel and then pushes up. And that's what happened in this instance. So just trying to go into a bit more detail because I only have the one pair on watch today. Okay. And I can factor in a few more of the things which literally just jump out at me. So when I'm analyzing these pairs, the things that I've learned to look for just jump out at me. But obviously when I'm making a video, you know, 20 minutes is often not enough for me to break down all the entire thought process that goes on, you know, in my head when I'm breaking down a pairs, I can usually do these things literally in a couple of seconds. The things that I've learned to see come to me in a couple of seconds. So one of the things that I do as well is I measure the impulse correction continuation, because what that helps us to do to do is determine where a move has potentially ended. And then if a move lines up with an area of value such as this, that gives me a, cl a clue as to where price is likely to stall and reverse. Okay, so we have that impulse correction continuation. So we know that the um, the correction, the continuation, sorry, out of an impulse correction continuation tends to be of a similar length to the preceding impulse. Well, if that was the case, we'd have an impulse correction continuation, which would take us up to this area. So just above the area of value that I was talking about, we also have within that, we we have this, okay? So we have this, we have this impulse correction potential continuation. If we measure that, that takes us up to about the same area, just slightly above. But in both instances, it takes us to above the area of value, implying that the liquidity might be sat just above there as opposed to at it, okay? And then at the end of this all, we have, especially since we've kind of almost tapped into this area multiple times now, we've near missed it, but we've kind of almost tapped into it multiple times, implying that the liquidity once again is sat above and not necessarily at the area of value. So you can see that price is just squeezing up to this area. Now we've had multiple, multiple near misses and price has tapped into, you know, we've kind of, this high tapped into this one, this one tapped into this one. We kind of, to some extent, have this this kind of structure here. We may be getting a bit of a middle section here to push up to this area. So what I'll be looking for today from this pair is quite simply the same thing that I was looking to yesterday. Remember I just said to you a moment ago that when we have these pieces of structure like this, we can kind of cut through these wicks. If we just switch to the line chart, you can see that that, Wick doesn't occur, it doesn't appear. So when we have these kind of structures like that, and once again, if I just switch to the line chart, that light that wick that was above there doesn't appear. So I'm kind of seeing that as volatility. When we kind of squeeze like this, what we often tend to see, so when the trend lines are kind of uh, moving closer together, what we tend to do is break the low. Uh, price gives us a more parallel piece of structure and then price pushes up to the upside to tap into the area that we anticipated it tapping into initially. Okay, so when I see little tight corrections like, like this, particularly when we've not quite tapped into the area of value that I just showed you on the left, okay, that doesn't fool me. This looks like a bit of a trap. I've seen this many times. So we have that kind of squeezed price action like that. So if you were to get short here, if you were to get short on the break of this correction or within it somehow, then what would likely happen is you would likely be tagged in, tagged out, price pushes up, and then we have that more parallel structure, which I was talking about, okay? So that is just the thought process. As I see it, I'm just going to take these trend lines off just for simplistic reasons and because, you know, it's difficult to add. This just looks like a corrective squeeze to me as opposed to a clear one, two, three touch structure. So with all of this in mind, what I will be looking for from this pair today is the following. Are we looking for price to specifically not just tap into this area because we've kind of almost done that on multiple occasions and because of you saw me a moment ago measuring the length for the impulses within this piece of structure because each of those measurements take us to above here. OK, I'll be looking specifically for price to break above this area of value, not just tap into it, push back down and flag. And then if you think about it, if we did that, 
uh, this these corrections are usually just the bigger players. So when we get an impulse down followed by a tight correction, usually that is the bigger players stacking their orders for the next leg, the next move to the downside. And if we got that, then we would be trading most likely below all of these highs, okay, below that area of value on the left that I showed you. And that, and it would be very, very likely, therefore, that we've washed out all the liquidity that was sat there and that we will uh, could well and truly be looking for a, a fairly big move to the downside. So, and even if price stalled here for some reason, so the base of this correction, what we call the 90% rule, the start of a piece of structure or the start of a correction, I will be, be able to manage that for something in the region of 3% down to there, just in case price became more complex and it formed some kind of deeper structure where we ended up with something like that. Okay, I'll be able to manage that to these lows for something in the region of 3% with a 10 pip stop loss, which is the minimum that those of us who trade the Falcon strategy go to. Of course, if I got the risk entry within the flag, my entry would be more like that perhaps. But again, we still only go to we always have a minimum of a 10 pip stop loss. If that was to be the case, then I'll be able to manage it for something in the region of three, three and a half percent. Okay. But the real, uh, the real target, the real first target, as it were, would probably be if we break that low. The next target would be there for something in the region of 7%. Not so concerned about the trend line because by that point, this would be a completed piece of structure. But the next target would be there. Where, where I would anticipate some kind of profit taking and I'd be able to manage that for something in the region of 10 to 11%. And of course, if we hit the 90% rule of this structure, so the base of this piece of structure, and we call it the 90% rule because we know that if we break this trend line and we do so impulsively, this trend line here, then we have a 90% chance of getting 90% of the way to the start of the structure, which is here. Okay, we'd be able to manage that. Uh, we'd have something in the region of 14% profit. So that is the thought process behind Euro Pound today. I hope you've enjoyed the extra detail that I went into today. As I say, a lot of these things took me a long time to learn. And I remember there were corrective pairs, which I used to avoid, corrective pairs such as Euro Pound, which I used to avoid just because I couldn't make sense of it. In uh, when I first started trading, I remember one pair in particular was Pound CAD. I used to look at Pound CAD and I used to think it's an absolute mess. This makes no sense to me whatsoever. And I just used to disregard it because I, I couldn't see the wood for the trees, as it were. But as I say, as you get more experienced, you you see these things, you start to see them. And one of the things that I encourage you to do if you don't do it already is to just pattern separate. So you just you literally just mark on a high like that. OK. You literally just mark on a high like that. And then you just, perhaps not like that, perhaps you get it a bit more straight than that. But you mark on a high and you just separate the structures like that. So you have the one, two, three. You have the one, two, three middle section. If you do this enough, you will imprint these patterns on your mind, okay? In your mind. You then have that correction there. And you just sit there doing this, okay? one, two, three, middle section. You don't have to be a, a great art, artist. Okay, price comes down, breaks the low. We push back up. We tap into that high there, okay, which was the this exchange of liquidity caused price to break to the downside. So we tap into the area, scoop, double top, push down. If you do this enough, you will imprint these patterns that we look for on your mind, and then you'll no longer see these uh, structures as mess, okay? But one of the reasons people fail in trading is because they're just not willing to do these things for long enough for them for themselves to be unconsciously competent okay they they think oh it's easy trading is just buying and selling you just buy and sell and that's it that's all there is to learn well if if it was that simple then i'm sure there'd be a lot more profitable traders and the failure rate in trading would not be 95 percent, which is what mark douglas claims it is in trading in the zone so there must be more to it than that there's psychology, there's doing something in any endeavor for long enough for you to actually uh, succeed in that endeavor. And to be a master at anything, you have to do it for a long time. If Why do you think a master's degree takes four years? You have to do the, the three-year degree course, and then you do the one-year course afterwards. That takes four years. So if if it takes four years to be a master according to the degree university system, then why would you think that you can just learn something like trading overnight 
when you know for many people it takes them years to be very very good at this but anyway i've digressed a bit i hope you've enjoyed this video and i will see you again in the next one and i will update you if i place a trade as well thanks for watching